you bon, everyone, and welcome back to Beyond the Northern Wall with me, your host, Kayla Malari. Now, we're going to start a new series today, and I know tensions are still high for those who are living in the United States. We're still going through an election. Let's take a break from that. Let's talk about astrology. Now, if you know me, you know that astrology is a huge part of who I am. And if you're on core, you know that astrology is a huge part for core. Let me rearrange my screen for a bit so you can figure out what's going on. Now, I'm going to give a little background on that. So for me, astrology is not something predictive. How do I explain this? So astrology came into my life since I was born. It was something that was always kind of taught to me. My family, my parents really brought in astrology for me and my sister. We were raised with science. We were raised with religion. We were raised with our cultural and ethnic foundations, but we were also raised with astrology in there as well. So I've known that I was a Capricorn since as far as I can remember. I know that my sister's a Scorpio. My parents are an Aquarius and a Virgo. It's just always been something there. Now, while people, there's with astrology signs, and I'll get more into that on finding your sign and what your signs mean and blah, blah, blah. But with those signs, I, it never was about the horoscope. It was never predictive for me. Astrology was always something to help me understand people. So I grew up with it. My parents like integrating it into just how we looked at the stars and mixed it with science, the astronomy of everything. And then as I grew older, I started to just venture into astrology myself because it was something that's always been there. So I wanted to learn more about it. And then when I was in my final years of high school, going into college, my dance studio that I was a part of dance direction did a dance of the Zodiac, a huge summer show where all of the directors and choreographers had to intensely study the Zodiac in order to present it on stage. So not only did I already know a lot about the Zodiac and astrology, but we actually studied it. We spent a full summer, three months studying all of the signs, all of the trades, everything from ruling planets to your houses. We had an astrologer as, um, as a consultant for the show. And then before the show, before we went live with the show for opening night, our mentor, or my mentor, Lisa Clark Schmeling, brought in the astrologer and had them read all the dancers' birth charts. So he went through everyone's birth chart and he read it out loud. And so everything about astrology is something, it's not just in passing for me. And that's what I want to kind of get across. It's not just like, oh, I read like my bedside astrologer. No, it's something that I've actually gained knowledge of through the years that's been very prominent, not necessarily a hobby. It's literally how I've utilized my way of communicating and understanding people. I use it as a way to understand how people work, how people listen, how they learn, how they understand so that I can understand them better. I've never been accused of being a terribly empathic person. Play that sentence in your head. And so I use it as a way to relate to people. I use it as a way to literally understand and I utilize it as a leader in order to make sure that when I'm working with people I know them or I can try my best to communicate them and relate to them in a way that they will understand so I love the zodiac and astrology for that because it really has helped me to understand people I don't necessarily check my horoscope every day or every year or anything like that I more use it as an understanding tool so I will relate that here now of course Korsman are Korsman Alumni Reserve Active. We all know their signs. It's always been in discussion. I'm going to say this. I'm going to only refer to the active Korsman as the zodiac signs. But when I talk about the zodiac signs tonight, I'm going to talk about them the way me, myself, and I have interacted with these signs. And I'm not just talking about, say, for instance, Sammy is a Virgo. When I talk about Virgo, I'm not just talking about Sammy. I'm talking about the 33 years of my life that I've interacted with all the Virgos I've ever interacted with. So the main point of tonight is it's not about you. <laughs> I want to get that across because like Bro TP said in our promo yesterday in our town hall, I'm, I have no mercy when it comes to this. The things are as they are. I see things as they are, and I'm going to relate things as they are. 
no sugar, no honey, makes the medicine go down. No, you just take your medicine, yeah? I'm gonna tell you all the good things I like about the sign. I'm gonna tell you the struggles I've had with the signs. And it's gonna be an all in good fun and good nature, but I just don't want anyone to be like, oh my gosh, that's attacking me. It's not, boo boo. If we've learned anything during the election, it's not about you, it's about the collective whole. So, we love it, you know. Now, finding your signs. You actually have, there's a lot of elements to your signs. I'm going to talk things more in the general sense, but there's a lot of elements. Now, a, to find your zodiac sign, you use your date of birth. Date of birth is how you find it. That's how you find your sun sign is your main sign. You have three. You have your sun sign, your moon sign, and your rising. Your sun sign is your dominant sign. It's just, it's the overall umbrella. Your moon sign is kind of like your emotional state. It's how you think, it's how you feel. And your rising is kind of your personality, your outside projection. Now, some people represent their rising more than anything else. That's kind of what you see right off the bat, but a lot of times your dominant sign is going to be your sun sign. And that's what I'm gonna focus on, your sun sign. We can get into the moon and rising. Then we can put in your date of birth and we can put in your location and your time of birth and we can go into your charts. We can talk about your fifth house. We can talk about your ruling planet. I don't think you're ready for that. We're not gonna go into that. So don't like like we don't we're not going to go in detail with that we're going to keep it really general we're going to go into the really general umbrella yeah so come with me on this general umbrella journey through the zodiac now we're talking about how i interact with the zodiac so i'm going to give you my three signs i am a capricorn sun sign i am a moon sign in pisces and i'm a rising in leo what does that mean Right now, it means nothing. I am quintessentially, what I like to embody is my sun sign, which is Capricorn. Everyone knows I am proud to be a Capricorn. So we're gonna talk about me as a Capricorn interacting with each of these signs. I'll kind of break them down in general information and then I'm gonna tell you how I have understood these signs, how I've used it to relate to them and the pros and the cons in my perspective. So this is not anyone's perspective, but my own. Are you ready? Are you guys ready for this? Here we go. Now, the first sign in the zodiac starts in spring. We start in spring. Oh, sorry, I forgot one thing. So I know people are going to say, your sign's not really your sign because things have changed over time, like they all shifted over. No, 3,000 years ago when the Babylonians created the astrological map, they couldn't see all the constellations in the sky. They used the Tropic of Cancer and the Tropic of Capricorn and used whatever constellations fell across there to create the astrological zodiac that we know today. Now, we just have better technology so we can see all of the constellations in the sky. There's an infinite amount. There's so many stars in the sky, but it doesn't change anything it doesn't change how we've related it doesn't change all of that so if you want to go into the astronomy of it throw down like but don't throw down with me I'm just gonna tell you right now you're probably gonna lose so we're gonna go with what we know of the westernized zodiac are you ready sweet now we are going to start at the beginning but not the beginning of our Julian year if you know the the calendar that we follow that's julian that's the julian year roman year we're gonna start in the season so the start of the beginning is spring spring is the beginning now the the western zodiac follows a life cycle so it starts at the beginning and it ends at the end i know that seems kind of repetitive but that's literally w what it is so at the beginning, it's birth, which is the beginning of spring, which starts with Aries. Now, Aries is a cardinal fire sign. It is ruled by the it is ruled by the planet Mars. It is the sign of the ram. Let me show you your sign real quick. Bam, Aries. It is the sign of the ram. And let me get into this. So every Every sign has an element on it, one of the four elements, fire, earth, air, and water. If you notice, it follows the same cycle of the avatar cycle. 
because after air comes water and then after water it's gonna be fire oh my gosh it's like they knew what they were doing so if you don't know what comes next think of the avatar cycle if you're a nerd that you know that stuff now when i say cardinal there are three types of the elementals there's cardinal fixed and mutable the easiest way to figure out those is cardinal is the initiator fixed is the executor and mutable is the adapter those are the easiest way to explain those Hang on, there's like so many other things but i'm not going to go into it. so aries notable aries right now that's active soulmate we talk about it all the time Aries but we've known so many I've known so many Aries over the time something curious that I just thought of today as I was going over this content was that I've actually creatively worked with a lot of Aries every time I've done a professional creativity job on the team that's been creating with me there's always been an Aries there hasn't like there are other signs that aren't as consistent as an Aries. So I kind of, I find that curious. I'm like, oh, I work really well with Aries. Now Aries are, are ruled by Mars. Mars is all about action and courage. And Aries is at the beginning. It's, it's literally at the beginning of the cycle, it's birth. Everything's new. Everything's a fresh start. Everything's a little bit chaotic. That is what Aries is. Aries is the, is, all about starting new things is a they're a little impulsive your aries is a little impulsive your ram likes is is the king and queen of works in progress your aries loves to start projects they're, that's like their favorite thing like oh my gosh i want to do this i want to do that i want to do that they get so excited and that's where their leadership comes in aries are natural leaders aries on his chariot the greek god they're natural leaders but they're not natural leaders the way you would think they're recruiters they're not at the helm like aries like a general just going follow me that's not how they lead they lead through recruitment they are very charismatic they tend to be very personable people that people automatically follow they just kind of follow them and what they do here's the thing though with every aries i've met i'm going to talk a lot about these zodiac signs like they're pokemon that i've captured Every Aries that I've met has denied their leadership quality. Every single one. And it's, which is weird because they've always been a very good leader. Like in their title, they've been a leader. I've had an artistic director as an Aries. I've had a dance captain as an Aries. I've had coworkers who are Aries, leaders who are Aries, a dance mom who's, all the dance moms were Aries. They're always just natural leaders. And they do it really well, but they're the first person to be like, I'm not a very good leader. And the rest of the Zodiac's like, wait, no one said that. And they're like, oh, no, I know. I'm just not. And the rest of us like, no, you're doing, you're doing great. What? Aries, come on. You know you're doing okay. You know you're doing great. Just It's okay to know you're doing great. Now, being at the beginning, being at the birth forefront, they're a little chaotic. And so when they feel things, they feel things very prominently. Fire. So fire is, it's passionate. What's token for Aries, they'll always say, Aries has, you know, a fiery anger. They have such a big temper. But it doesn't always execute in the same way you think. Sometimes Aries burns it all. Like when they're angry and they explode like a volcano, they can burn it all. There's another side to Aries that's complete opposite. A lot of the signs are completely opposite of what you think they are, and they're both right. The other side of the Aries rage is complete dead silence. It's the smolder that happens after everything burns. They will shut down on you, and that is it. Aries will shut it down. And once they shut it down, nothing gets through. If they don't want to listen to you, they're not listening to you. They don't want to look at you. They're not looking at you. It's done. No matter what you say, Aries is done. Which is funny because Aries does have a very short fuse, but Aries cannot stand it when people don't like them. Your Aries will make sure you are not mad at them. They can't take the heat because they'll respond with heat, but they can't, They like, like every Aries I've known has always been like, they don't ask outright are you mad at me? They will preemptively make sure they, they apologize and everything's okay, which is kind of funny. Like one of my friends at Knott's, 
she was an Aries and without not asking if people were mad, she would just show up with like gift baskets and then just throw it down in front of you. And you'll be like, what is this? And she'll be like, oh, I just, I didn't know if you were mad at me or not. And we'll be like, oh no, I, I'm not mad at you all, at all. I didn't. And she's like, oh, I just, you know, I didn't know. I just wanted to make sure you were okay. I'm like, yeah, no, everything's, everything's fine. What? So Aries is very scared because that, that's their natural leader in them, that recruitment. They don't want people to feel left out. So they don't want you to get mad at them. But if you do actually go forth with it and are mad at them, they will burn you. So I say, like, if you're an Aries or if you have an Aries in your life, Aries, it's okay to feel your feelings. It's always okay to feel your feelings. Side note, anyone who, like, hides their feelings, and there are going to be signs in there that are like, I hide my feelings. It's not cute. No one thinks you're cool. It doesn't make you special. It's, if anything, it's bad. It's usually bad. If you hide your feelings, it's bad. Feel things. Aries feel things. They are fine with feeling things. Feel your feelings, Aries. Be okay with feeling your feelings. Just know that every time you explode, add a little bit more length to your wick. Just a little bit more, a little bit more. Because I know in your head, you're like, I'm being so patient, but you're like, look at, look at my nine mile wick before the explosion. And the rest of us are like, we love you, Aries. No, it's not nine miles. It's like this. So just add a little bit more. Every time, every time, just add a little bit more. Add a little bit more. Otherwise, it makes it really hard for Aries to communicate. The action part of the Mars ruling planet gets in the way of the communication part of everything else. So, Aries. The next in the zodiac. From birth, we go, of course, into infancy. Infancy goes into Taurus. Taurus is a fixed Earth sign. Taurus is ruled by the planet Venus, and Taurus is represented by, as I hear, the bull. Now, Taurus, notable, we don't actually have any current active Taurus, Tauri, but we've had a lot of Tauri on core. This is, I'm going to say this is objective and this is just my personal perspective, but it's not. It's actually part of their identifier. They are naturally beautiful people. They're beautiful people. Think of a Taurus in your life and think about it. They got a, a handsome, strong face. They're just very good looking. And a lot of times you stare at your Tauri and you're like, they're just really beautiful. And that's kind of the epitome of what Taurus is. If we're, if Aries was the beginning of spring, Taurus is right in the throes of it. When everything's blossoming, everything's blooming. Taurus loves pretty things. They love beauty. If Taurus was a fabric, they're a nice brocade. They just, and with the brocade, they love luxury. They love the high quality of things. They don't need a lot of things, but they like the high standard. They're the ones that aren't, you're not going to see them walking around in just some Nikes or whatnot. If they have a pair of red bottoms, they worked really hard for those red bottoms. They take care of those red bottoms and they will keep those red bottoms till the end of their days. A Taurus loves luxury. They, their life is delectable. Everything is just rich and very, very like silk sheets and sitting and playing video games on a high console is like the epitome of what an, not Aries, I said Aries, Taurus is, a Taurus. Your Taurus loves the high quality of things. Your Taurus also loves the high quality of life. It's in spring, they enjoy life. They will literally stop and smell the flowers. Taurus enjoys life. That's part of what the luxury is. There are people who really love existing and it's great you need a Taurus in your life to really get you to feel that they're also very grounded in it they are fixed earth so they're hard workers they they're the bull they will plow the field two things with that though Taurus is stubborn stubborn like you will never meet a sign more stubborn than a Taurus. And here, let me break it down for you when I say, when I say stubborn. It's not, they're not like, no, no, no. Taurus will be like, you'll say, hey, Taurus, the sky's blue. And Taurus will not look up and go, okay, I don't, I don't think it's blue. And you're like, no, 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 it is blue. The sky's blue. Everyone says it's blue. You can look at it, it's blue. 
there's articles that say it's been blue forever. It's blue. And Taurus would be like, no. 15 years later, because Taurus is slow and steady wins the race. 15 years later, Taurus will come up to you and be like, oh, so the sky's blue. And you're like, oh yeah, yeah, I told you that like 15 years ago. And they're like, no, 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 but I needed, I needed to come to that conclusion myself. It doesn't matter what you think, I had to come to it myself. So I know now the sky is blue. So stubborn that you can't get a Taurus to think anything until they choose to think it themselves. You can present them with all the facts, doesn't matter. They have to come to that conclusion themselves. And it takes them a long time to get there. They are slow and steady. They do not, but in the slow and steady, think of a Taurus you know. Think of a major goal that they've accomplished and then look back at how much time they spent to accomplish that goal. It's amazing their dedication. They will plow that field and it doesn't matter if it takes all summer to do it. They will plow the field and they will get to the end. And everyone will look and be like, why does Taurus have the biggest field plowed? And they're like, they just did it. They just lowered their head. They took their time. They did the work and they accomplished it. It's amazing. A lot of the Taurus that I know now, like anyone who's achieved their fitness goals, anyone who's achieved their skill set goals, anyone that has like a really good career are all Taurus who have worked on it for years but they're stubborn and they don't like sharing their really nice things. <laughs> That's, as I've learned from Taurus. So with your Taurus, take your time. They take a little bit more time, but they're totally worth the time. On you, Taurus, just be a little bit more open. It, your stubbornness can work in your favor, but sometimes, and this is gonna be the roaming theme, sometimes the stubbornness is not cute. Just. Be okay with letting someone in, yeah? I know we're earth signs. My fellow earth signs, we're generally a very stubborn group. We're the earth benders. I know we're a proud people. You gotta let the Fire Nation come in and colonize along the border because, hey, they also have some knowledge and they've also been running from the war. So, you know, if you wanna weave it up. Going on to the next sign, we are coming out of infancy. We're coming out of infancy. We are going into being a toddler. We're growing up now. We're exploring the world. We're coming out of spring into the beginning. No, to the end of spring. This is the end of spring. So now we've hit Gemini. Oh, the Geminis. Oh, my air signs. Gemini is a mutable air sign. Super mutable, meaning adaptable. They are ruled by the planet Mercury. Oh, I didn't go over, sorry, Venus for Taurus. Venus is all about love and money for Taurus. Taurus. Mercury in Gemini is all about communication, both nonverbal and verbal, and technology and consciousness. They are represented by the twins. And get, like I said, they are the toddlers in, in the life cycle of the Zodiac. Now, Gemini. Gemini working with them is very interesting. Gemini up here. They're very fast. They're quick learners, quick on the uptake. Not necessarily saying that they're like a spaz, but they like to do things quickly. Like they like to get things done quickly and they work faster. It's interesting because when Gemini are around and if I've talked to a group, I can pick out the Geminis and the Libras actually because air signs, but the Geminis and some Libras they work too fast, so they don't like when things have to be repeated over and over again. Gemini got the directions the first time, and they're ready to move on. So they're like, did everyone get that? No? All right. So it's very easy for a Gemini to get bored quickly because they move at lightning speed. They are literally in a different plane. They love to have conversation love to have conversation. They also like to communicate and that doesn't necessarily always mean talking. They like to communicate whether it's via text, whether it's via message. They like to keep connected with their people, whether it's, you know, person to person, face to face, hanging out. Connection is for Geminis. They're one of the more extroverted signs. They like to be able to know what's going on. They are it, it, oh, here's the thing with Geminis. So they're the twins. They're the 
the represented by the twins over here. So most people think Gemini's are like, they're two-faced. No, anyone who says a Gemini's two-faced literally just looked at a Zodiac sign and made an assumption and they're wrong. I'm telling you now, they're wrong. Gemini are not two-faced. Gemini have two opposing personalities that both perfectly exemplify them. But the thing is about the two Geminis is that sometimes when you meet, you know one side of the Gemini. So when you meet the other side, it kind of throws you and you think, oh, that's not really who they are. No, both of them is who they are. They are these two complete opposites. And it's really interesting. One of my favorite Geminis that I worked with at Knott's, he was, he could be the center of attention. He was, uh, he loved to dress and drag, do spontaneous performances in the dressing rooms. He would just like turn the lights out, suddenly play music and come in. And no matter what you were doing, he would put a performance on for you. Doesn't matter. He was also the person who was super quiet, didn't need to be talking, doesn't need anyone to even know where he is, would sit quietly in the corner. A lot of our Geminis on the team have always been either really great performers on stage, like super animated, super out there. But then when you kind of meet them and you get on them on a personal level, they're very reserved, very quiet, very to themselves. Or they're prominently very cute and cuddly and very squeaky and nice, but in their heart, they're like, I'm really hard and edgy and whatnot. There's this, this opposition to Gemini's, this light and dark side. I mean, all the signs have a light and dark, but when you meet the two sides of a Gemini, it kind of can be jarring for some people. And that's just for them. Gemini's don't change anything about you. Those two sides are who you are. That's who you are. What I will say for Gemini's is it's sometimes hard. When, no, no, this isn't even a bad thing. My Gemini's, when I have conversations with them, with them, worship, can't speak, conversations with them, they can last forever, which is never a bad thing. I love having conversation, but you will never out talk a Gemini. Uh, not all Geminis, because there are definitely some Geminis who aren't big talkers. But when you get the talking Geminis, you will never out talk a Gemini. They have infinite conversation. They could talk about the threads in their pants. And you're like, I don't know how you're doing this right now. This is kind of amazing. With that though, Gemini's, because they are a mutable sign, they're all about the completing of tasks. They end the task. If Cardinal is initiating and Fixed is doing, mutable is completing the task, which is where the adaptation comes from. Now with their completing the task and their tendency to get bored, sometimes Gemini doesn't pay attention to the details. They're not super detail oriented. They're kind of like, I gotta get it done and I gotta get it done fast. So if you want your to-do list done quickly, you throw it to a Gemini. But sometimes you'll be like, hey Gemini, I need you to go to the store and I need toilet paper. And then Gemini shows up, here's your toilet paper. And you're like, oh my God, that's awesome. I wasn't done saying what I needed from the store. And Gemini goes, oh, I heard toilet paper. So I just went and you're like, no, you're not wrong. I just wasn't done. So Gemini's, I say, take a breath and wait for all of the instructions first before you go shooting off. Cause you're ready to go. You're an air sign. You're ready to go. You just, just like Aang, you got, it takes some patience to just sit down and, and listen all the way through. Don't be Aang, put it on your whirly scooter and just going down. Just, you got to sit sometimes, Aang, you got to sit and chill. So lovely Geminis. Now we are coming out of the toddler age, the running around of toddler age, and we are now going into grade school. We're learning, we're starting to understand our feelings. And so now we have hit lovely cancer. Oh, my cancers. You are cardinal water. You are ruled by the moon, which is all about emotions and the feminine and the darkness within us all about sentimentality. Oh, the moon child. They're like the hippies of the Zodiac and they are represented by the crab. Notable cancers right now on core is totally Rossin. And what's funny is he kind of hates being a cancer. Here's the thing with cancers. Cancers are water signs. The water signs are wonderfully emotional signs. I love it. I love emotions. Emotions are great. Now, if they're a water sign, 
out of the water, I always see a Cancer as a lake. They're a wide lake. They are enclosed. They don't, not everyone, they're not like the ocean where they're just, you know, taking over the whole planet. The lakes are enclosed. So they, they, they keep things in their little lake environment. And you know, the lake doesn't like, it's not like the ocean where the things are changing all the time and whether the lake can change, but it's pretty fixed in there. It's pretty, you know, set in there. And, but there's still depths that you can get lost in. There's still depths and darkness, but it's not as daunting as the ocean. You know what I mean? It's, it's down there. It's, it's set. They're, they are so sentimental. The thing I love about cancers is they are where a Taurus loves the luxury of things. Cancers are so minimalist. Cancers, they're not about the riches of things. They're so, like, they're, they're the hippies. They're so homegrown. They're so homebound. They're humble. They're so sweet. What you do is you, you can give a Cancer a card for their birthday, and they will treasure that card for the rest of their life, but not treasure it the way you think. They'll treasure it as in they'll keep it 17 years later they'll get rid of clothes easily they're not that big on clothes they're not big on like major they don't buy expensive things necessarily they're not about big expensive things they like this one card and they'll tell you they're like oh yeah that card you gave me 17 years ago oh i still have it and you're like oh my gosh cancer thank you and they're like yeah but i also i want the card to know that it feels loved like i don't want it to feel like it got put on the shelf like Woody from Toy Story. So sometimes I take the card out once a year and I'll read it so that the card knows that I treasure it. But then in treasuring that, I read your message and then I treasure you and then I want to just make sure you feel cherished and everything. So like if you want to feel loved, like if you want to feel loved, you find yourself a cancer. They're so in my heart on their sleeve. Exposed raw nerve of a heart. Cancer is usually feeling things tenfold. So empathic. If you want someone to feel with you, not necessarily feel for you, but feel with you, go find a Cancer. And a Cancer doesn't do well in a large crowd. Don't bring your Cancers out to mingle. No, 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 no. Take your Gemini out to mingle. Take your Taurus out to mingle. Keep your Cancer in the Pokeball and you do a little one-on-one -on -one with your Cancer. Your Cancer loves a one-on-one. -on -one. They're very, very good. They have these little crabby hands that are like this, so then they pinch, they pinch with love, and they hold you, and they and they embrace you like this. This is a little crab. They just love this. The problem with the cancer. They have this hard shell. Now the hard shell doesn't mean that they have a hard exterior. They just keep things enclosed. They're not big on sharing, even though they're very emotional, they're not big on like sharing their deepest, darkest secrets. They have that shell as protection. Once you get past that shell, it's done. It's over. Squish. Like, the cancer is just squishy on the inside. All the squishiness. Once that shell breaks, prepare to just have a puddle of a crab in your hands. And you're like, oh gosh, I've broken my cancer. They're done. With that, it's it, once you break the shell, oh, a cancer can get salty. A cancer will remember that you broke their shell. And here's the thing, because they're emotional, because they're water, because water is so changing and turbulent, you don't know what will break their shell. You have no idea what will break a cancer shell. You could do what you could high five them one day and then high five them the next day. And that second high five has all the emotions that they've never talked about. And suddenly they're crying in your lap and you're like, oh, I didn't, I'm so sorry. I didn't know. And poor Cancer's like, oh, awkward, walk sideways. <laughs> I love Cancers. They're so great. They're stressful change, but you got to love the Cancers. You need that feeliness in your life. And that's where that grade school is, where when you're in grade school and you don't really understand, you're like, I'm feeling feelings and I don't really understand. Totally a Cancer. Now, moving on from Cancers, we are circling back. We've ended that first cycle of the waters, of the water signs, of the elements. We've ended on, oh no, mutable air was the end of spring. 
cardinal is the was the beginning of summer so cancer started off your summer now we go into the throes of summer we are now in the heat of it we are in the heat of summer and we are now in middle school we have our emotions are now going haywire we are going through changes everything's happening we are in the season of the leo you know what i forgot to put on my astrology hat <laughs> I need to wear this. This is why I forgot to wear this earlier. Now I'm now it's right. This is perfect. Leo. Leo's. Oh, my Leo's. My fixed fire signs ruled by the sun, the sun, which embodies will, ego, self expression and self involvement. And their symbol is the lion. Now your Leo's are your actors they're your performers they have the spotlight they love the spotlight and by golly gum the spotlight loves them we really rely on our leos to kind of keep the sunshine in our lives we actually rely on leos to be a bright beacon even if they're not having the greatest day and i do love that and appreciate that about leos that leos come in they are the blazing sun they are they can be silly and crazy or they can just be like all of the energy in your life they love it and they love getting that praise for it oh if you want to keep your leo happy you just tell them how pretty they are you tell them they're doing great you tell them you love their work you gotta tell them oh you gotta share and like all of their posts a leo loves the attention they love mm -mm -mm. If Cancer loves giving attention, they're right next to Leo who loves getting attention. They love all of it. Just say, mm, nom, 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 nom. they just eat it all up. It just, it feeds their photosynthesis of self-appreciation and it makes them glow even brighter. And like I said, we need our sun. We need our sun to get through the day. Like a lot of the times when you are literally feeling down, go find your Leo. No matter what your Leo will get you laughing and will get you smiling time and time again. They can be very generous with their light. They're not looking to keep their light in clothes. They will be generous with their light. With their light comes a good amount of optimism, not as profound as Sagittarius, but Leos are very optimist people. They're not necessarily, I mean, there are signs that are naturally pessimist, <laughs> that's me but but the leo sign is an optimist they are in the time when when you're in middle school and you're changing and, and everything's happening they're all about reinventing themselves they're all about the self-care and the self-help and and redoing things and they like to go 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 they like to have things now the problem with that is if there's ever a lull in in what they're doing and that's usually defined by if they're not getting reception or attention from people now getting attention i know we think is like oh it's a bad thing you're attention talk no no no, it's not we do things you do things at work so you get like everyone wants attention they're just they gauge their interaction by who's listening and so if there's a lull in their work if leo's not getting their attention they will very easily go into this downward spiral and be like, I'm not doing anything with my life. Everything is going up in flames. Oh my gosh. They have such a passion for what they love that if even for a second, there's the possibility of that flicker kind of going out, they're like, it's the end. It's the end of the world. Nope. It's not, you got, Leo, you gotta trust that it's okay. There's gonna be lulls, my dear. There's gonna be times when the attention's not gonna be on you. And you have to be okay with that. You really have to be okay with that. Sometimes, Leos, you're, you're trying to read the room and you're trying to make people feel good. And so you get up and you dance around, but sometimes that's not what needs to happen. Sometimes it just needs to be a little bit more chill. Sometimes you just need to sit back Sometimes we just need to, you know, look. We need, like go hang out with a tourist. Sometimes you just need to smell the flowers. You don't have to like blaze on the flowers. Be like, I love you. No, they know. They know. Taurus is like, we know. Just chill, Leo. Just chill, Leo. Leo, bring it back. Bring it back in. Yeah. But they're the thick sign, so they like to do things. So if you want to keep your Leo happy, praise them and give them things to do. Leo, you have to be okay. 
if you don't have things to do and if there's there's quiet you got to be okay with that quiet no, we can't praise you all the time trust we want to we can't we just and it's not because we hate you it's not because we're mad we're just doing other things and you have to know that leo you have to know we just i gotta do other things you're like the middle school kid that's like mom 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 and mom's like i just need to make you dinner leo leo i just need to make you dinner <laughs> love the leos coming out of summer and ending summer we have our mutable earth sign which is good old-fashioned Virgos. Virgos end the summer. Virgos are the mutable earth. They are ruled by Mercury. So Mercury was also in Gemini. And so it's kind of same, same, but different for Virgos. They're all about communication and productivity. Now they are also depicted by the Virgin here. And it's kind of like a, I don't know how to move my hand. This, here we go. The Virgin. Now Virgos. Uh, current Virgos right now on the team are, oh, sorry, I didn't say current Le Leos. Joseph's uh, the current Leo on the team, but we've been new. We knew that. Who else would be, who else could Miss Anna maybe but a Leo? Come on. That performance? Of course. Now, current Virgos on the team are Sammy and Koki. Here's the thing. I've grown up with Virgos. I have had Virgos around me since forever. My mother is a Virgo. My godmother is a Virgo. My aunts are Virgos. My god sister, a Virgo. My mentor, my mentor's sister, who actually was a major mentor to me in the acting department, Virgo. It's all about the Virgos. Virgos have surrounded me my whole life. Here's the thing, a Virgo and a Capricorn pairing, you will never find a better business pairing than a Virgo and a Capricorn. I'm not even kidding about that. Like you want things to be done, Virgo and Capricorn, because Virgos are the backbone of the world. Virgos are the nurses. Virgos are the secretaries. Virgos are the vice presidents. Ooh, Virgos are probably in the House and the Senate. Virgos literally are the ones behind the main person that are getting stuff done. You, here's the thing, if you want your list done fast you hand it over to the gemini now if you want your list done right you hand it to a virgo because gemini will be like here's your list got it done and they'll give it to you it's complete all your tasks are done thank you gemini you give your list over to a virgo they'll come up to you and be like okay so i got your list you were missing some things on the list so i added it to the list and then i fulfilled the list and then i made your second list for you so you're good and you're like oh my gosh, thanks Virgo. Like, I didn't even know. Thanks for that. And they're like, yeah, Virgos in their workspace, super organized. In their personal space, it's absolute chaos. And that kind of depicts who they are kind of as people. I We may, okay, we joke about, I, I gotta take this off. I can't sit down. It's too big. You're too big astrology hat. I gotta figure out. I gotta find a smaller version of my astrology hat for this. Now with Virgos, we joke on core about Capricorns all the time, or not Capricorns, me all the time, being the possibility of being a serial killer. Here's the actual truth. I'm gonna give you some tea. The most notable and notorious serial killers in the United States, majority, more than 50% are Virgos. Here's the reason why. Virgos, y'all have some control issues you tell a virgo they can't control something and it's done the world has exploded a virgo not being able to control something is i mean a controlling is a depiction of being a psychopath not sociopath side note sociopaths don't actually exist psychopath now and that's part of what makes serial killers serial killers is that they can't con they have to be in control of everything virgos tend to be serial killers here's the thing with virgos too i love virgos i love i will if i have a virgo on my team i know we're good i love working with virgos there's a reason why i've been surrounded by them and of course as a capricorn i like seek out virgos 
Here's the thing, though. Here's what I there, here's the thing about Virgos. Virgos are Maui from Moana. Virgos look at you and they go, you're welcome. And you go, oh, I didn't, I didn't say anything. And they're like, no, but like, I did all this for you and I filled out your to-do list and I got you, you know, your food and I make sure you're okay and, and whatnot. So you're welcome. They're like, oh yeah, I was going to say thank you. Of course I was going to say thank you. And they're like, oh no, I know. You're welcome. And you're like, well, okay, Virgo, you could have waited at least for me to say thank you. It's kind of pretentious that you just said you're welcome. And Virgo goes, you're welcome. And so you go, oh, thank you. Oh, yeah, you're right. Thank you, Virgo. <laughs> so it's like they're not wrong. They're not wrong at all. They totally did all those things. Just Virgos, you have to, one, take your hand off the wheel for a second. You got to trust that other people can drive the car. I know taking your hand off the wheel is the worst thing for you but you have to and you have to trust that other people i mean you're an earth sign i get it we're stubborn you gotta trust that other people know what they're doing you just got to you just got to you know what i mean i know you're in that group project where you're like i did my work i'm like yes we know virgo and it was actually really really good but you gotta trust that we're all gonna turn it in on time i promise you we won't disappoint Oh, Virgos. I just, I, I'm telling you this because my mother was a Virgo and oh, Virgos. I love my mom. I love my mom so much, but she, and she taught me that discipline of get it done. You got to get it done. You got to get it done right. Meticulously right. Like detail oriented, right? Virgos with their details. Oh, scary. Now we've come out of summer and we are now starting fall. We are in our college years. We're in those romantic years of where we're just starting off college. We're like at the cusp of being an adult. We're like still kids because we're still 18. And we have definitely delved into the realm of the Libra. Libras are cardinal air signs. They are ruled by Venus, just like Taurus. But Venus is very different in Gemini. In Gemini, it's all about partnership, design, lasting friendships, and charisma and they are depicted by the scales. Now Libra, if I could turn Libra into uh, a career, Libra is the fashion designer. Libra is the interior designer. Libra is all about art and, and music. They're like, they either have an appreciation for it or it's part of who they are as a person. Libras, the, to understand a Libra, you have to understand that their world view, their worldview is romanticized. Now, does that mean romantic in love? Why, yes. But everything for a Libra is romanticized. The best way to know what a Libra likes or what how a Libra views things is find their favorite show, find their favorite song, and you will know everything about a Libra. Do you want to know what the perfect date is for a Libra? Go find their favorite love song. Do exactly what that love song says. You want to know what their aesthetic is? Go find their favorite show, and you'll know, okay, everything in the show, the way it looks, the way it feels, the color scheme, that's my Libra. Libra is, is, Libra's like, oh yeah, I, my, you'll ask Libra, what's your goal in life? And they're like, you know, my goal in life is to just find my true love and walk on the beach and have rose petals lead up to this beautiful restaurant by the seashore and then have them propose to me on bended knee with a rose. And you're like, that's the bachelor. And they're like, no, that's just how I view life. And you're like, okay, well, Libra, like, what do you want to do? What is your major goal that you're working for? And Libra will be like, you know, just when I was, I just view myself in the future, just as a kid, I'm just really optimistic and I'm looking for someplace bigger and better. And then one day these giants will come in and they'll tear down my entire world and they'll eat my mother in front of me. And then I'll hold on to that conviction forever and I'll grow up and I'll become the one person in the military that can take them down. And you're like, Libra, that's the plot to attack on Titan. That's not real life. That's a fantasy world. That's like, that's shown. And they're like, no, but that's my life. You're like, Libra, what do you want to do with everything? And they're like, I just want to be Hokage. I just want Libra. That's not real. 
<laughs> Libras love the romantic idea that they find in music and they find in art that they find in shows and movies and video games. And it's actually that appreciation for it that makes Libras so good at creating these things. We need Libras to live this beautiful, fantastical life so that they can create these things so that we can enjoy them. So thank your Libras because they're making those awesome clothes you're wearing. Thank your Libras because they're making all of the shows you're watching. Thank your Libras because they're the ones that are imagining these video games that people are like, why is this so good? And you're like, oh, Libra made it. And you're like, oh, thanks, Libra. And they're like, I just based it off my life. And then they go sit under a tree with an acoustic guitar and sing Hello, Delilah to the love of their life. Like, that's just a Libra. <laughs> Libras are great, but that, and that, that is the upside and the downside. The other side is Libras make the best friends. I'm not kidding you. Libras are the best of friends, like not the best of friends within self. Like if you have a friend who's a really great friend, probably a Libra. That's like their thing. They want everyone to get along. They love when everyone gets along. They don't, not, it's not to say that they don't like conflict because I haven't met a Libra that was scared of conflict, but I've met Libras that are like, okay, you know what? If this is happening with a group, I'll be the mediator. They are major mediators. They want, they need everyone to be comfortable and they will do the work to make sure everyone's comfortable. Here's a problem though. Oh no, actually it's a problem and a good thing. Libras are the scales, perfect judges. They will literally weigh out, but they're not gonna just weigh, they're not just gonna stay neutral. A lot of people think, oh, a Libra's just neutral forever. No, 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 they weigh out the options. Given different aspects, you'll never really know what a Libra decides because they take the content in and they judge based on the content, not based on neutrality. So if you give them a bag of feathers and a you know, a bag of bowling balls, they'll weigh it as feathers and bowling balls. They won't weigh it the same as apples and oranges. Those are different. Libras are really good to bounce ideas off of, to really get uh, a third person perspective that's not super biased. Problem is though, never ask a Libra where they want to eat. Don't do it. If you have the conviction to wait for a Libra to decide where to eat, you will die of starvation and then the Libra will decide where to eat. And then when you get there, the Libra will change their mind. That's just, that's what it is. Now, don't let Libras make those split decisions. Just let them judge things. They're great judges. They make great judges. Give them the harder stuff. They're great friends. So that is our lovely Libras. Libras are kicking off the fall season. Now we're going into the throes of fall. Oh, okay. Here we go. Now, most people will look at their own sign and say that my sign is the best sign. My sign's my favorite sign. My sign's not my favorite sign. My favorite sign's coming up. My favorite sign is deep and dark and full of terrors. My favorite sign is Scorpio. Scorpios are fixed water signs. They are ruled by the planet Pluto. But the time when Pluto was a planet, poor sailor Pluto. And Pluto is all about deep transformation, death, the afterlife, and the subconscious. If you think about it in Greek mythology or Roman mythology, we're talking Pluto, so it's Hades. We're talking about the treasures of the deep right now. And they are represented by the scorpion. Now here's something curious about Scorpios. And we are in Scorpio season right now. The thing about Scorpios is when we had our birth charts read years and years ago, the astrologer was like, I'll make your birth charts out and we'll read them in front of everyone if you want. But he gave one warning and I always stuck with it. it always, I always remembered it. He said, if you're a Scorpio, I, I suggest or ask if you want me to read your birth chart in private. And the reason for this is, Scorpios are deep and dark and full of terrors. Like if they're the water sign, if, if a cancer was a lake, Scorpios are the ocean. They're vast and unexplored. And the depths, we've not known the depths of a Scorpio. They are personified by the careers of secret agents and assassins, like all these cool things, like they're cool. Scorpios are cool and dark, but most of the things that are cool and dark, if you think about it, them in reality, like if Tokyo Ghoul was real, 
that's not cool, yo. Like that, none of that is okay. It's that's like you're like, oh gosh. If if Scorpio was an anime, it'd be Tokyo Ghoul, and you're just like, oh, oh no. Ugh. So with Scorpios, they they have so much depth to them. Here's the thing, water sign. So a lot of emotion, a lot of emotion. The cre- this is the creepy thing about Scorpios. Raging storm at the top of the ocean, under the waves, calm and silent. Don't fight a Scorpio. It, like I'm going to tell you now, if you ever fight a Scorpio, you're gonna die. I'm just gonna say that you're gonna die. They have impenetrable armor. You can't touch them. They have their pincers, so they're not afraid of conflict. They will meet you head on. But if you betray a Scorpio, like if you fall on the bad side of a Scorpio, they will look you in the eye as that stinger takes you in the back. And they will watch you. And as you go down, they will whisper, remember. And you're like, I don't remember. And they're like 18 years ago, remember. They will not forget. They are like the ocean has memory, water has memory. They don't, they don't forget. It's crazy. It's terrible. Scorpios feel, they're very empathic to the point of almost psychic. Again, if you want to have an emotional connection, look for the water signs. With Scorpios, they, they are so empathic that they, they kind of know things without you knowing. And that bleeds into the psychic energy from Scorpios. Like, if you don't like ghosts, stay away from a Scorpio. If you don't like demons, stay away from a Scorpio. Scorpios, you're tugging, tug, tugging that crap all behind you all day long. Stop it. Let it go. <laughs> the thing about Scorpios, though, is that if you, I mean, it's the same thing with the armor and whatnot. Their emotions can go zero to 80 in a heartbeat, just like a cancer. You can kind of see it with a Scorpio. They'll be straightforward and be like, they'll tell you to your face. They're like, I don't like what you're doing or I don't like that. I don't like this. But once a Scorpio is done, it's done. And so, I, and here's the thing that creates a lot of trust issues with Scorpio. And so Scorpios, I say, trust that there are good people out there. Sometimes if we're asking you questions, it's not that we distrust you or it's not that we're trying to break your trust or loyalty. Sometimes we are just asking a question. We're just asking a question. That's all it is. I promise. We're just asking a question. Sometimes Scorpio is so much on the defensive that they're like, Paha! and you're like, no, I just asked if you wanted a grande or a tall. And they're like, Papa, stab me in the back. And you're like, oh, we had Trenta. So Scorpio's just <laughs> calibrate, calibrate, calibrate. Oh, Bakugo is totally a Scorpio. Are you kidding me? Heck yeah. That's why he's so intense. Now we move into the end of fall. The end of fall goes into one of the signs that I actually didn't know that much about until later on in my life. And it's the Sagittarius sign. Sagittarius is mutable fire sign. It's ruled by Jupiter and Jupiter is about expansion and growth and good fortune. And they're depicted by the archer or most notably the, the centaur archer. Now here's the thing about Sagittarius. Now I said like optimism. There's, I forget what sign I said is optimist. A Sagittarius is painfully optimistic. And I say painfully because it's painfully optimistic. They will find the silver lining no matter what. We need that. Oh, I'm not saying we don't need that. We need our Sagittarius to look for that silver lining. But here's the thing. The Sagittarius that I've known are like, can be beaten on the ground and be like, but at least I can still see with my eye. And you're like, Sagittarius, you don't have legs. And Sagittarius is like, but it's okay because I still have all my hair. And you're like, Sagittarius, um, I know you're like painfully optimistic, but it's okay to know that it's not okay. <laughs> They're also very adventurous people. They have wanderlust. 
The Sagittarius are the ones who went abroad. They're in their adult, we're in the adult now of the life cycle, they're adults. So they're out, they're going on adventures, they're traveling abroad, they're learning about cultures, they're learning about people. They, they love people, Sagittarius love people. They love being involved with people or learning about people or seeing people be people. They love that side of it. They love travel, they love a certain amount of risk to that. So when you travel, like a Sagittarius would be the ones who spin the globe and then land their finger. They're like, I'm gonna go there. And you're like, I think you're just pointed to the middle of the ocean. And then they go out and they're like, it's a Scorpio. No, I'm kidding. But Sagittarius is very adventurous in that sense. You don't tie them down. They are definitely, I mean, they are mutable fire. They are ready to be out in the world. They're not about really, they're not necessarily big ones to, set roots down their fire that likes to spread they like to be out and learn about new things they have that passion for life and adventure which makes it very hard to tie them down now when the thing about Sagittarii is that when they get into relationships whether it be romantic or it be a connection with friends they like they like having a lot of friendships they're not going to invest crazily into any friendship until they've actually gone through the paces of it. Sagittarius likes to chase. They like to gather new friends. And then they keep they keep it like acquaintances. They, they're the ones who know someone everywhere in the world. You pick a random country and Sagittarius like, oh, I know someone from there. Oh, I know someone from there. And they'll know about them. They'll hang out with them and whatnot. But it's they're they're not looking for any deep connections right off the bat so when you make a deep connection with a sagittarius props because they don't like being tied down like that's the best way to scare a sagittarius off you give them you give them something solid and you say you have to commit to this and a sagittarius goes nope bam out of here they're gone because <laughs> they love to have their freedom they love their freedom. Don't take a Sagittarius's freedom away. In that sense as well, along with the freedom and along with the optimism, Sagittarii won't, you're, you're not going to them for, for the hard conversations. Not deep. You can have deep existential conversations. They're, they're wanderers. They love culture. They love talking about how people think and feel and how they've evolved. But if you're looking for kind of heavier topics like real heavy like the heavy kind of stuff you probably talked about with with a Scorpio Sagittarius is just gonna look at you and they're gonna be like they're gonna smile and then they're just gonna walk away <laughs> they're not they're not about the heavy they're not about the heavy they they keep it light with Sagittarius though is that when things do get awkward or heavy they kind of just laugh it off because they like to keep like I said they keep it light they'll laugh it off and and sometimes I found with Sagittarius when I talk to them and I'm, I want to have a little bit of this more serious conversation I can't get them to be serious enough <laughs> that I can talk they'll they'll find a way to add their token laugh and their laugh is always so refreshing but sometimes I'm like no, Sag, it, this isn't the time for optimism. Like, I'm not looking for optimism. I'm not looking for for any of that. I just, we, I'm actually talking to you about something. And Sagittarius is like, huh, the sky's blue. And you're like, oh, okay. Thanks, Sag. I love you, son. So with the archers, it's all about painful, painful optimism, which is ironic because now we've got to the painful pessimist of the Zodiac, which is the Capricorns? Hi, Caps. Welcome. It, it, here's the thing. We've gone into Capricorns. Now, of course, I have a deeper feeling for Capricorn because I am a Capricorn. Here's the thing about Capricorn. I'm going to give you a breakdown. Of, okay, wait. Before we go into what Capricorn kicks off winter, so they're the cardinal earth sign. They generally fall around the winter solstice in or around that they're ruled by Saturn so here's the thing the planets go into different different zodiac signs like right now in my zodiac in in Capricorn there's Jupiter which means that finally good fortune has followed me so when you want like like everyone and that's Sagittarius Sagittarius gets Jupiter all the time it's all about good fortune like 
honestly, I forgot to say this about Sag. If you want to go to the casino, take a Sag with you. They're super lucky. I forgot to say that. Like, take a Sag with you and give them a lotto ticket. Oh, crap. I wanted to buy a lotto ticket. Give a Sag a lotto ticket. They're really lucky people. Now, with with the Ju Jupiter is in Sagittarius and it's in Capricorn right now. Now, here's the thing. Capricorn is ruled by Saturn. Saturn, Saturn's a cruel father. No one likes when Saturn's in their sign because Saturn's all about responsibility and hard work and determination and discipline. Saturn doesn't believe anything is earned unless it's hard work and trials. So Taurus, hard work. Virgo, hard work. Saturn in Capricorn, hard work and trials, which is why we're oftentimes depicted by the goat, whether it be a sea goat or most likely a mountain goat. Capricorn is a goat, which means that everything in Capricorn's life is a mountain. Everything, everything in Capricorn's life is a mountain. And you may think I'm just talking about myself. No, I'm not. I've not met, not, not I've met, I don't, I, not I don't, I don't cleave to Capricorns. I've met so many Capricorns in my existence. And what's cool about Capricorns is we work well alone. So we're very much like we don't have a pride. We don't have a herd. We're not about that. We do, we like to be alone. And so we tend to not cleave together, flock together as Capricorns. But when we do meet the Capricorns I've met over time have always been people I've admired and who hustle. And then when I finally got to talk to them and found out more about them, they tend to have a very intense and kind of jarring, remarkable story behind them. And then I usually ask, what sign are you? Because I think they're either a Cancer or a Scorpio and they go, oh, I'm a Capricorn. And I'm like, oh, yo, like... A Capricorn's not painfully optimistic. They don't come in shining bright. They're not super, super social butterflies. They kind of just exist and they get things done. They are the CEOs of the world. They are the doctors. They are the ones getting stuff done. But they also, because they represent that midlife crisis, they have this pessimism about them because they've had to grow up faster than everyone else around because Saturn just sits in their sign and puts them through the paces. Here's what I'm telling you. I'm telling you mostly what, what's wrong with Capricorn because Capricorn is the most self-judgmental sign. If you're a Cap, you judge yourself so hard. This is what I'm gonna tell you. Every Capricorn has a superiority complex that feeds at an inferiority complex. Example is Capricorn. I should do this because I'm a, I want to be a good person. So I'm a good person. Wait, but if I know that I'm doing it and it makes me a good person, am I doing it because I'm genuinely a good person or I'm doing it because I know it makes you a good person? Well, actually, it doesn't matter because I'm being a good person. Oh, I'm a great person. I'm a good person who takes care of people. If you want to be taken care of, get yourself a Capricorn. They give you home and hearth and a roof over your head and a job and money and security, more foundations than you ever want. And they'll be like, I do that. And that makes me a good person. They're like, but you knowing that you do that, you're not doing it because it's the right thing to do. You're doing it because you want the accolades for it. So that kind of makes you a poopy person. And they're like, oh crap, I am a poopy person. And you're like, no, you're not a poopy person because that self-deprecation is not a good look. And so you try not to self-deprecate, but then at the same time, Capricorn's like, no, but if you don't, if you don't level yourself, if you, if you just keep thinking you're great, then that makes you actually not that great of a person. But then Capricorn's like, no, but I am great. I worked really hard to be great. I'm awesome. I am awesome. My standards are high and I've met them. And then they also think, well, now that you think that it's made you kind of the worst person ever and you just think you have high standards, you're not someone who's going to actually have high standards. You're just fulfilling. It's a self-fulfilling prophecy. You're just posing. You're actually a faker. And you're like, no, I'm not faking. I actually did the work. And you're like, well, but you said you did the work and you're not waiting for someone else to give you the credit. You're giving yourself the credit. That is a Capricorn day in and day out. It's a mess. There's stress ball change. They'll get it done. They'll get it done well. They are the cardinal sign. They are initiator of projects. I mean, if you want a business that's lucrative, go find yourself a Capricorn. I just said that to my sister. I started working with John and John's a Capricorn. And I don't work with many Capricorns. I literally said, is this what it's like working with a Capricorn? This is awesome. 
I want a Capricorn too. Is this what it's like working with me? This is awesome. Now I thought that I'm awesome. I'm not really awesome because it makes me kind of a selfish self inflating person. And now I don't like me and blah, blah, blah. See, it's just, it's a vicious cycle. Just Capricorns. <sighs> Be the goat that goes up the hill and gets that mineral. I mean, yeah, Stresca Alba is a Capricorn. Um, if you want to calm us down, give us a Scorpio or a Cancer or a Virgo. Those are the three. Or a Taurus, actually. A Taurus, too. Taurus, Virgo, Cancer, Scorpio. Those are good for Capricorns. Now we've moved out into, we are now in the throes of winter. And we've gone to one of the signs. Okay, if, if we're talking about signs that I, as this Capricorn, interact with, we're going to talk a little bit about this one. An Aquarius. Oh, Aquarius. Aquarius. Okay, my best way of describing how I, or just any other any other earth sign deals with an Aquarius is literally that episode from Avatar, Bitter Work, when Toph is teaching Aang how to earth bend. That is literally, if you want to know what it's like for an earth sign to be with an Aquarius air sign, bitter work. Here's the thing about Aquarius. I'm going to mash it up. So my, my father is an Aquarius. He's an Aquarius. He's the most Aquarius I've ever Aquarius. I'm surrounded by Aquarii. Just surrounded. Encore, Liz is our most notable right now, but we've had so many Aquarii on Encore. I'm going to say this. Aquarius. Aquarii are so smart. Vastly intelligent people. Vastly intelligent. They love learning. They love knowledge. They love skill building. They work really hard to know everything. They are a walking encyclopedia. Aquarius won't let you forget it. They remind you every two seconds that they're smart. They go, I'm smart. And everyone goes, yeah, we agree. And they're like, no, I'm smart. And you're like, Aquarius, we agree. No one's saying you're not, but they'll find every opportunity to remind you they're smart. They're like Ravenclaws. Oh my gosh, I'm coming for you too, Ravenclaws. Ravenclaws are always like, we're the smart house. And everyone else is like, but Hermione was in Gryffindor. And Ravenclaws are like, we're the smart house. And we're like, you had Cho Chang. And they're like, we're the smart house. And we're like, okay, we'll give you Luna Lovegood. She was pretty awesome. So Aquarius, we get it. We know you're smart. You don't have to remind us. We agree with you. Now, here's the thing with Aquarius. They're aliens, they're weird. They are either stuck forever in the past or forever in the future, never in the present. If you want to know everything about what has happened, go find yourself an Aquarius. I can throw down intellectually with an Aquarius and I love it. Now, if you want to think about the possibilities of the future, if you really are going, this is, an Aquarius is an old geezer in the life cycle. They're old. They've seen some stuff. They've seen it all. So they've, they're thinking about everything that they've seen. And they're thinking about all the things that they can work with. To the point where you're like, Aquarius, here, now, here, now, right here, now. Like, like talk to me now. Getting an Aquarius to ground is impossible. They're an air sign. They're living in the ether. They're up in their UFO, experimenting and learning a new language with what's her face from arrival. They are not here with you. Getting an Aquarius to sit down and look at you and be in the moment is impossible. Here's the thing though. I respect the way Aquarius learn. They're so focused. I really, it, like, I've told all the Aquarii that I work with that they learn in a different sense. They're like binary code. In different forms, they work like binary code. You just, you can just see, it's like the matrix. You just see them processing to the point where they are so used to processing complexities that simple ideas kind of like throw them for a loop. Literally, it's, it's funny. Because something super complicated, like if I have a Rubik's cube, I could throw it at Aquarius's face. It'll probably get solved the minute it makes connection. If I offer an Aquarius water, they'll look at me and be like, what are you doing? And then they'll probably like kiss it. I don't know. And you're just like, no, that was what? Aquarius is not what you're supposed to do. And they're like, no, but I also know all of the Pokemon in a Pokedex. And you're like, yeah, that's crazy amazing. 
and then you try to hand them something from a comic book and they're like, I don't understand gifts. I'm not here. You tell them to walk on five, they walk on eight, you change it to do, it's it's done. It's done. <laughs> Aquarii are, are very, they're very unique. They are, Aquarius are fixed air. They're ruled by Uranus, which is the revolutionary, all about originality and innovation. That is lit in Aquarius. They're water bearers and they're old geezers. I actually, I, as much as I clash with Aquarii, I, I, I do love them. My problem with Aquarii is this, is that a lot of times when I have conversations with Aquarii, because they're not in the present, they're not actually listening to what I'm saying. They're, they hear they hear the content. We can have great political, intellectual conversations, but they're usually thinking about what they're gonna say next. And that's my only thing with Aquarius. Don't listen, don't think about what you're gonna say next. Don't think about your response. Don't think about how you're gonna solve the problem. Don't think about a funny joke. Don't think about that. Listen to your person, Aquarius. Listen to your person. We know you're smart. We know you can solve things. Sometimes it's not about the solving of things. Sometimes it's just about conversation. Some that Aquarius, hey, air signs, you need to go, uh, Avatar, you need to go find your Kataras, your water signs. Go find a water sign because they will teach you like human relation in, in an empathy. And then you need to find an earth sign because an earth sign doesn't deal with the air signs shenanigans. Oh my gosh, an Aquarius and a Virgo is hilarious. <laughs> I think it's funny. <laughs> Aquarii, I mean, keep inventing because we rely on you to invent new things. And now we have ended winter and we are going on to, honestly, it's, a, it's like death. We're on into the ex... The ne ex essentialness of it the spirit of it and we have now hit pisces pisces is mutable water they are ruled by neptune god of the seas the oldest in the zodiac pisces is the oldest sign in the zodiac they are all about mysticism and the psychic energy about dreams and energy they're about imagination they're a water sign and so if cancer's the lake and if scorpio's the ocean to me i see pisces as the river the running river it's it's flowing and it's going it's like they are time incarnate on a river where you're just watching time flow they love the flow of things they are literally the two fish forever circling around if you want like uh, every pisces i know wakes up uh, this is my epitome of a pisces they wake up and they contemplate their existence and life and they think about what their purpose is in the world. And then they go take a shower. And for a Pisces, that happens every day. Every, every day, every moment. They're like, what am I doing here? What can I contribute to the world? What am I doing with my life? And you're like, Pisces, you just, they just ask what you want on your bagel. <laughs> But Pisces is great for those existential conversations. Sometimes they they get so existential that they tend to have a Messiah complex, that whole self-sacrificing. So Pisces are all about the self-sacrifice. You want someone to have your back, it's nice to have a Pisces. Here's the downside of that. Sometimes Pisces is self-sacrificing and it no one needs them to be self-sacrificing no like what they're they're like oh i'm doing this for you and everyone's like we didn't need you to do that it doesn't do anything but thanks i'm sorry and pisces is like oh here's my heart and you're like i didn't ask for it nor did i want it 